monitor IRC channels on Freenet, which is, by the way, not allowed. I tried it, and they're like, you can't do that. OK, fine, whatever. And you want to see when they mention your product or your name. You know, you have all these channels talking. Maybe they're talking about you. It's a great paranoid tool. So you can search, of course. It means you can export IRC logs. You can index them, and you can search them. That's useless. You know, you want to get in on the chat. You want to come in when they're talking about you and say, yeah, that's true. That's great. He's a great guy. I know him personally. Or, yeah, that's a great product. Or, no, no, it's all lies. It's all lies. But you want to be there in real time. Information, when it's old, is useless. This is really the way it goes. Information, the value decays really quickly. So you want to be able to monitor the whole of Freenet in real time. Well, you take, you subscribe to all of the channels. Don't do this. This is by the not allowed, but this is what you would do if it was allowed. Subscribe to all the channels. Publish all of the content of the channels onto a feed on livesire.com. Create a pipe and say on this pipe, I want to match on these and these and these words. Read your pipe. That's it. That's simple. So, conclusions. Messaging can be fun. And it should be fun. It's communication. It's what we like doing best of all. It's what the internet is all about, is communicating, making pieces work together. The fact that it's really boring and complex and painful is because it's been done by big companies who are basically incompetent or greedy or stupid or all three. We have new open protocols that change the game. They really change the game. The messaging has been dominated by products, first of all, APIs, secondly, and protocols. Really, it's a very recent phenomenon. APIs are useless. That's ODBC. You know, it didn't get us anywhere. You want standard protocols where anyone can compete. You want open source products. Anyone can improve. You want competition. You want freedom from lock-in. You want the programmers actually fighting to make a better product. So, for example, with, with uh, OpenAMQ and AMQP, you know, we find it was too slow. So we have some, some guys in Slovakia, friends of ours, FastMQ. And they make a product called ZeroMQ, which is basically doing a lot of this work but with no broker, and they're hitting 4 million messages a second with latencies of about 10 microseconds, just in software. It's really extraordinary. This is competition. People saying, I can do better. And it's all open source. So you get the input from, you know, input from Intel, from other people helping us with that. AMQP is good. It's still too complex for me. It's failed in its mission of being simple and accessible. It's enterprise technology, which is, no, which is really you know, no good. All that means is that it's a problem. You want it to be web technology for me. So my advice is to try, have a look at RESTMS. Try it out. If you're a Perl programmer, you're lucky, because I made Perl classes, which wrap up the basic objects in Perl. If you're a Python or a Ruby or a Lua programmer, and you, you feel like it, then you know, rewrite my class, my Perl class, and contribute as a class in other languages. Go for it. Try it out. Tell us what you think. It should, in theory, be simpler to use an XML RPC, much, much simpler than SOAP. And it should be very close to production ready. We're talking about code that's been, you know, there's, here's three and a half K lines of code that is new. And it's running on an AMQ backbone, which has been running for years and years in production. So it's, it's very close to production ready, the whole thing. That's it. I'll take questions now. It's a good question. The, um, the way I see it, so there's different points of view in this. My, my point of view is standards is uh, work of the community and that it's a matter of selection, as in natural selection. In other words, standards for me should develop by an organic process where people propose small improvements and the good ones get adopted, the bad ones get thrown away. So for me, the best approach to standards I've seen ever in, in IT is the RFC model, where there are lots and lots and lots and lots of small standards. And interoperability is a matter of that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. You know, I implement RFC 1218, I implement RFC this and this, and they're all very formal, they're all easy to verify, because the standard is a small piece of specification. That's my view. 
MQP doesn't really do that. MQP is getting very big monolithic standard. So interoperability with MQP as it stands is a difficult thing to even prove, let alone achieve. What I've been working on, apart from software, is a process around MQP to encourage community-driven standards development. And RESTMS is part of that. There are a bunch of other standards that we've been developing, small standards, which I call supporting specifications. And there's a wiki site. No. Ah, this is. Gorilla, Gorilla Standards Development. It's how to do it without a top-down structure, without committees, without meetings, without that. And it's, it's based on work that we did in, in other organizations, like Digistan, how to make good, simple, accessible, open standards. If you're doing any kind of standards work, it's fun to look at that. And that's interoperability. It's based on people trying specs, implementing them, saying it's good, it's not good. And if it's good, and you get two or three companies implementing it, teams implementing it, you have interoperability. You don't interoperate with products, only with standards. Yeah? Otherwise, you get this business where, well, my product's doing this, well, I'll change mine to make it work with yours. That's crap. You interoperate with written specifications. And if they're not simple and small, you can't do that, and therefore you don't get interoperability. Next question. Is your goal mostly to make messaging more accessible to regular developers, or also to get the enterprise messaging people? Regular developers. Regular developers. Can you repeat the question? Yes, so the question was, is the messaging for regular developers or for enterprise? The roughly. Not to reinvigorate the enterprise messaging well, there's no, there's no contradiction. The thing is that enterprises, and enterprises we mean big companies with, you know, with many staff, have a very high tolerance for pain. They don't mind using really complicated technologies which take a long time to learn. They don't mind paying a specialist full time just to learn what the heck SOAP is. I mean, they don't mind that. Little companies do mind that. So little companies need it to be very cheap, very simple, and very effective very quickly. That's your the Dow Jones company? That was a big one? Or? Actually, they're quite small, to be honest. They're well known, but they're actually the team there is like uh, four or five people. And they're very, very good. And they actually push us to make things a lot simpler which is interesting, um, exceptional. That's very unusual in, 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 in large businesses to have that good team, but they were in fact a team that used to work at uh, a small internet startup called MarketWatch, which was bought, and so they're very competent people. It's unusual. Most big companies are filled with very incompetent people. I don't want to be unkind, but that's the truth. And they don't, they don't really want, you know, they want things to be comfortably difficult, you know, it makes everyone's life in a certain way easy, you know, big budgets, big projects, not necessary. So my goal is to really make this easy for people like me who are basically lazy. I don't like having to be really concentrated to understand something. I want it to be simple, to work automatically, to be, you know, foolproof. It's more fun, and it's also part of the art. If you make software that good that it works for anybody, you know, it's an achievement. Next question, Dieter. Right. Yeah. So there are the, the, the volumes we talk about. So the volumes talk about they go from anything from one message a second up to five million messages a second. That's the volumes we talk about in, in real life use that we see. If you're doing a if you're picking stories from the BBC, it's one per second if you're lucky, if they're working really hard. If you are uh, processing orders on the Chicago options exchange, it's five million per second. So, obviously there are trade-offs in, 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 in different ways of doing things. This guy here aims at that level. So if you want to see how to make stuff, sorry, you're there. If you want to see how to make stuff that can process millions per second, look at 0MQ. It takes a different approach there's no broker. It's basically there's a library which you plug into your application, and you have to write applications very, very, very carefully, because if you make mistakes in applications, it slows everything down. And then the other end, I have REST MS, 
which I don't think it's one a second, I think it's probably about 100 or 500 a second, but it's very chatty, REST MS. And REST is very chatty. It's 